Hey guys, welcome to my channel or welcome back. My name is Lara for those of you that do not know and today I'm so excited to be doing this video for you guys where I'm turning myself into Steph Jones from after. This has been highly requested ever since I turned myself into Molly and I've been working on getting this all together because for this video I didn't do in the Molly one but for this video I wanted to do a complete outfit so I've been waiting for some of the pieces to arrive for a few weeks now but nonetheless that is what we're going to be doing today. I have a whole outfit planned. I'm doing the hair, makeup. I'm kind of going a little different than what we see as Steph in the movie. I mean, Khadija obviously looks very, very different from how I look, so it's obviously going to have to be a little bit interpreted and a little bit different. I'm changing up the hair, the makeup. She's very minimal, so we're just going to play around with it. I'm going to answer some of you guys' Q&A questions on my Twitter so we can talk while I'm doing my makeup and my hair and all that stuff, so I'm really excited to see how it turns out. So let's just get started. I'm going to open up to the questions. The first thing that a lot of people are asking me about is how New York was and how it was like to meet um, Hero, Joe, and Anna. And I know I didn't really touch on it because I did do the vlog, but I didn't talk about like my experience per se meeting them. I think it can be like easily interpreted what my experience was like meeting them. But since you guys are asking, I guess I'll kind of touch on it. Um, honestly, it was like such a surreal and crazy experience. Like to have been, first of all, just to meet Anna, I've been reading her book. Like I started reading after when I was literally like in high school, like sophomore year of high school or something. And now I'm a junior in college. It's just so crazy and full circle to meet her like that. Like it was so surreal, I guess. And then with Hero and Joe, obviously that was also pretty crazy because this has been something that I've been like focused on their lives for like a year now. Like it's literally been a year since I started talking about after on my channel all the time. So it was just so crazy to like, first of all, see them in person and just like talking because I never thought that I would get an opportunity like that ever. So the fact that I did get that opportunity and I got to meet them was so crazy. Like, so crazy. <laughs> I, like, can't even believe it, honestly. Um, but in person, talking to them, they were all so, so sweet. Obviously, you guys saw if you watched my vlog. If you haven't watched the vlog, I'll have it linked down below. But obviously, all of them were so sweet to me. If you didn't notice, so what happened was my friend Matt obviously came with us. And he went in front of my friends to go meet them first. And then once he was done he like ran back and grabbed the camera and then started filming so that he could get a shot of me meeting them and then i also had my phone tucked into my pants with the voice memo on so that i could get the audio and then i merged them together in my video so if you're wondering how you can like hear them so clearly it's because i had my voice memo on in my pocket and then I like sync them together. So that's how you can hear it. I was like really <laughs> nervous about how that was gonna go because I really wanted to have something to like remember the moment by. We couldn't do pictures. Obviously, if you guys know about the New York signing, there was kind of a lot of rules and it was very quick. I'm still forever grateful for like the experience and it was still super fun, but it was very fast. But meeting them all, Josephine obviously was the first one that I met. And she was just literally the sweetest and it was so unexpected. Like I walked up to her, I was about to be like, I love you so much, like I'm about to tell her everything. And she was just like, oh my God, like you have a YouTube channel. Like I, I love your videos. And I was just like, <laughs> so caught off guard. Like the most caught off guard I think I've ever been in my whole life. I mean, if you watch the video, you can see how shocked I was that those are the words that came out of her mouth. Like genuinely, I was so surprised and shocked by that. Um, the fact that she's like seen my videos, I don't know what videos she's seen. Clearly she's seen enough of my videos that she recognized my face right away, which is another thing that's kind of mind blowing and weird. Um, so the fact of the matter that she just like knew me right away really is insane. And I'm just like still kind of flabbergasted over that aspect. Um, but yeah, she was just so nice and welcoming and so warm and sweet. Like... Like, it's weird to say, but, like, I genuinely, like, miss them. Like, <laughs> I miss, like, the feeling that they all gave me. And then Hero, obviously, was just, like, super sweet, was very willing to just, like, kind of talk. And I was just, like, I'm really excited to see you in the film. And he was, like, I'm excited for you to see me in the film. So he was just, like, super sweet. And then, obviously, Anna, who um, also recognized me. She had thought she would met me before, but I corrected her and told her I had a YouTube channel. And then she remembered me from there. So that's really crazy. 
I'm gonna do pencil eyeliner, so I don't know if I'll be able to talk while I'm doing pencil eyeliner. I'm just doing like a very thin line. Obviously this look is a lot more simple than Molly's. Even Molly's makeup in the movie was kind of simple, but I kind of amped it up. But I think the main focus of Steph's look is kind of like the really nice skin. Um, I'm gonna give myself some freckles just to kind of jazz it up. Okay, good. I think Steph might even do like a winged liner, but like we don't go there. So we're just gonna do a lot of mascara just to make the eyes kind of pop on their own. But yeah, that looks good. But anywho, overall New York was just like the best experience of my life. The fact that I got to meet some of my friends from online that are a part of the actor community, you guys obviously saw it in the vlog, Lex, Court, and Lexi. I love them so much. We're trying to meet up again this year. I mean, me and Lexi live pretty close, so we're gonna go see the movie together when it comes out, so that's really exciting. But it's just so crazy how you can like meet people online and make like these real connections with them and like they become like your real best friends. It's so wild to me. <laughs> I never expected that from this like journey of starting to talk about after on my channel. Like I never expected any of this at all. So I'm just so grateful for all of it and thankful. And it's just been a crazy journey. But yeah, New York was so fun. All in all, I had the best time ever and meeting the cast, Joe and Hero and meeting Anna was just like, such a delight and I was so happy to be there. So yeah, I guess that answers that question hopefully. Let's see, I know you guys are asking me questions about the movie and stuff like that. So, hmm. A lot of people are asking me what I think the worst things <laughs> that Tessa and Harden did to each other were. Um, and also, what was the other part of the question? If I would have forgiven Harden for the bet. I think I've talked about this before, but probably not. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I don't think Tessa's like stupid for forgiving him, but I definitely don't think I would have. Like if people break my trust that hard, like I'm kind of over it. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't think I would have been very forgiving of that. Um, but regarding them, I feel like Harden's past is super difficult. He's obviously gone through so many horrible decisions and life choices and just like situations in general that he's been put in that maybe were like out of his control just when he was younger and stuff like that so he's a very damaged person and so the bet obviously was super bad i think the worst thing he's ever done wasn't even something he's done to tessa but what he did to natalie um obviously we learn about that in the series natalie who's from england and he sorry i'm like doing mascara and trying to talk but natalie who he bet his friends that he could have sex with too and then there was the whole situation there so i feel like that was the worst i mean he like filmed her all that stuff is really bad so that's probably the worst i think he's done for tessa probably just cheating on harden and like kissing other boys in front of him not cool not a good thing to do when you're in a relationship so yeah probably that okay i think i'm done with the eyes again just like super simple um, don't want to go crazy. Oh, a lot of people are asking me how I actually found After, which I didn't realize so many of you guys didn't know, like, how I found the, um, the book series or anything like that. But if you don't know, I know a lot of you guys are newer subscribers because I've gained so many subscribers this year, just recently. So thank you very much if you're a new subscriber. That literally means the world to me that you like me enough to click a button and watch my videos every week. It's honestly the best feeling ever. Um, but... I realize a lot of you guys probably don't know a lot about me. When I was like, I'm 21 right now if you don't know, but when I was like 14, 15, 16, One Direction was my whole life. I was so obsessed. I had like a stan account on Twitter for them. They were all I thunk about, talked about. Like literally, I was so obsessed. Like the amount of, of obsessed I am with After, but probably worse, like I was insane. Um, obsessed with them, Harry Styles especially was my favorite. So I had like this really big obsession with them and obviously as a huge fangirl I loved reading fan fiction and after was a fan fiction that I just randomly stumbled upon um on Wattpad when I was I think 15 and it was still like the first book being written when I found it so nothing like too crazy had happened yet. I know I'm using my hands. Do you guys use your hands or do you use brushes? Also I'm putting my concealer on first which a lot of you guys were coming for me for last time so let me know what you guys do. I'm curious. 
Anywho, um, so I found the fan fiction pretty early on and then I started reading it. I like became obsessed. I made my best friend at the time, McKenna, who you guys have seen in my videos. Um, I made her read it because she was also obsessed with One Direction. And so we both read it, we were both obsessed. Literally we would like sneak away during school when Anna would post updates so that we could read uh, the new chapters. Like we were like so in deep with this book. And so when it came out, I think in October of 2014 as a published book, I went and bought it right away. I was so obsessed and excited. If you guys look on my channel, you can watch like my first video where I bought the book like in 2014. So I've been a fan for a really long time. I think a lot of you guys don't realize that, but yeah, I definitely have been. Um, I've been talking on Twitter about how I wanna do a video where I react and look at my old One Direction um, like fangirl stan Twitter tweets. I think that would be like the funniest thing ever. So let me know if that's a good idea if you guys want to see that. Um, but yeah, also this foundation, a little too dark for me. I didn't remember which color I had before when I went and got a new one. So I picked the wrong one, obviously, because why would I remember? But it's a little dark, but I think if I blend it in and put powder on, it'll be fine. <laughs> Hopefully. I don't think it, I mean, on the camera, I think it looks normal, so maybe like a shade too dark for me but it's just like a light foundation it doesn't look like Steph or Khadijah is wearing anything too crazy on her face her skin just looks kind of like naturally perfect because Khadijah just kind of like has like really good skin as you know a model and, and a beautiful person in general so we're just kind of faking it a little bit everybody always tells me I have good skin and I'm like I think it's like the light in the camera like my skin really isn't killing it by any means so thank you but i don't know about that one <laughs> okay i'm gonna set it with some powder just a little bit and then i'm gonna do the rest of my face brows and then lips it's so weird that i do brows like last i know people do brows before their eye makeup a lot i don't know again with the everybody does their makeup different thing i don't know Oh, people are asking me um, what I think about Bitter Love, which is Pia Mia's new song that's going to be in the movie. If you guys haven't heard it, go look it up. It's literally so good. I'm obsessed with it. I've been playing it on repeat. First of all, Pia Mia is just such a talented singer and I've loved her music forever. Um, the fact that we have her in the movie as Tristan is like so crazy to me. I'm so excited to see her. But yeah, her new song, Bitter Love, it's going to be in After. And it's going to play supposedly in the final scene and then into the credits. So I'm so excited to see whatever that is. I know it's going to be amazing. The song is so hessa, like it hurts. So I'm really ready. So excited to see that, honestly. And the song's really, really good. So go check it out. Yeah, we literally love Pia in this house. Just saying. I don't really recognize Steph having any highlight on, but I can't really not put highlight on. So just like a touch. But she does have very rosy cheeks. So we're definitely gonna put some blush on. I don't know why, but I feel like this color is kind of similar to what she has. It's like corally color, I guess. It's gonna be washed out a little bit once I do the freckles, which I'm gonna do next. I've never put like fake freckles on my face, so I'm scared, but we're just gonna try it out, see how it comes out. Khadijah's like very freckly, so I thought it would be interesting to try. Okay, so let's try it. I'm gonna use an eyeliner pencil, the one I used on my eyes. If I can find where I put it. <laughs> okay. And then I'm just going to do like really light strokes, I guess. I don't know. Let's see. This, I need to be focused. I can't talk. Oh, no. Okay. Some of these are definitely too dark. But I think if I fix it. It won't look too crazy. Three hours later. I don't know. What do you guys think? Does it look like real freckles or does it look like I have makeup all over my face? 
I don't know, I'm kind of feeling like it just looks like a bunch of like dots on my face. <laughs> but we really did try it. We're just gonna go with it because at this point it's a little too late to fix it. I think it looks okay. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it just looks weird to me because I like don't have freckles. No, I have eyeliner all over my hand, but. Okay, next we're gonna do my eyebrows. Um, she doesn't have anything crazy going with her brows, so I'm just gonna do something simple, kind of similar to just like what I do on a normal basis, I guess. Oh, Lexi wants to know, would Harden die for Tessa? Yeah, he would. <laughs> oh, a lot of people are asking me to talk about the comparison of After and Fifty Shades of Grey, which I've touched on in the past before, I believe, but I don't really think I've given like my full idea on it. Um, I think that it's a good comparison if you're trying to get fans of Fifty Shades of Grey to watch the movie, but I don't really think it's the best comparison if you're trying to just get like people to watch the movie, if that makes sense, because I just... I don't know, Fifty Shades of Grey didn't have the best rep when it was coming out, so I don't think it's super like highly acclaimed by many people outside of like romance fans and you know stuff like that, people that like the book. So it's just difficult for me to accept that like it is being so widely compared because first of all, I really don't think the stories are that similar. I mean, I can understand why people would say the comparison I guess but the stories are like very different at the end of the day and about different things so to me it just kind of seems like a weird comparison that we're kind of like grasping at straws just to like use the comparison so I don't really like comparing it to Fifty Shades of Grey um I'm personally like I like Fifty Shades of Grey so like I'm not even saying that just because like I don't like it or whatever it may be it's just like I don't know I want people to want to see after I don't want people to think that it is exactly like Fifty Shades of Grey because again it's like a completely different story so that just makes me kind of nervous but like I said I don't think it's like a huge deal um so yeah I guess that's what I have to say about that I know we already kind of messed up with the freckles but now I'm most nervous to do the hair so yeah that's scary for the lips we're just gonna do a gloss I'm gonna go with Fenty my girl uh this is in Fussy this is like my favorite lip gloss ever so, that's good. Okay. So that's the finished makeup. I'm just gonna spray it on. Whew. Okay. So this is the finished makeup. Again, very simple, minimal freckles. We don't know about it yet, but okay. For the hair. So as you can see, my hair is in braids right now. Now here's the thing. In the movie, it looks like Steph is wearing a lot of French braids. Your girl can't do French braids. Also, her hair is very long. My hair, it's pretty short. So we're gonna kind of improvise, I guess. Um, what my plan is, is to take out these braids that I've had in since this morning and hope to God that my hair looks kind of wavy. And then I'm gonna put in the red streaks and then I'm gonna do a braid on each side, like a small one, and then I'm gonna do a ponytail on each side. I think that'll look kind of similar to the uh, the look that Steph has, Khadijah has in the films, but it'll be kind of modified to suit my hair better. We'll see, I guess, I don't know. So hold on, let's see, I have hair elastics to do that and then today for the hair tie you guys know what we did for the molly video i used like a hair little pod thing for this i bought these edge blendable hair color like pens i guess this is what they look like i've used these before i used them when i was younger so i figured i would buy them again and there's a red one in there. I mean, it's multiple colors. I was going to use this for when I did my gender bent harden get um, the look or turning myself into whatever. So I have those colors still. We're just going to be using the red one today. So it looks like this. It's like a pen, like kind of. I don't know. It's like a weird like texture. I don't know if I should go in and start drawing before I take the braids out. I don't know. I also don't really know. How is this gonna work? I'm scared. I feel like I need like, let's see. I have like this, if I put it against it, will it be easier? Maybe a little? You can kind of see it working. I don't know, I think I'm gonna take it out and do it and that'll be easier. I also have a brush. Yeah, perhaps we take it out and then do it. So let's hope my hair looks 
slightly wavy at least i don't know it's still kind of damp honestly too but you know we're just going for it today i guess so okay it's like kind of wavy again still kind of wet so not super ideal but I do have a blow dryer. Maybe I should dry it a little bit. Hold. Okay, so this is kind of what we're working with. I just wanted my hair to be a little more like texturized compared to just like my pin straight hair in a ponytail. So that's why we did that. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna try now to add some red. Let's do like a front piece because she does have like her front pieces red I don't really know how to go about this like I go like this get the color on the piece of hair and then brush it but brushing it kind of makes it flat I don't know I'm gonna try doing this and then I'll get back to you this is hard <laughs> I feel like doing Molly's was like easier. I don't know if I should put it into the ponytails and then do it, like do the braid and then color it. That might be easier. Let's try that, honestly, okay? So what I'm gonna do is take like a section right here and I'm just gonna do like a small normal braid. Like, I just can't do French braids. I don't know how. If you guys, like, know how, I'm so jealous. And if you have any good tutorials to learn how, please let me know. But, okay. That's just, like, a normal braid. I'm only going to do it, like, halfway down because it doesn't really matter. But let's see now if with the braid I can add some red to it. Yeah, that's so much easier. Wow. I'm just gonna rub it in. Yeah, that's a lot easier. Okay. And then I can also do like this. Okay. And then we'll do a ponytail. So my hair's parted in the middle, hers is parted in the middle too, so that's easy. And then, I guess just kind of up a tiny bit. Like that. Honestly, all the wave fell out of it, but I think that looks okay. I'm going to double do it just to make sure it stays. In place. Okay, that looks good enough for me, honestly. Kind of like, kind of like brushing it. And then I'm gonna add more red through the ends. This is kind of hard to add the color. Also, I don't know if you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna focus on getting like the ends of the hair the most saturated. Okay, so I think this is where we're at for this side. I mean, there's a decent amount of red. We have the braid, the pony. I think that's gonna be good enough. My hand's red. Uh, so then we're gonna do this side and we'll see how it turns out together. This dye stuff also makes your hair have like the weirdest texture, not even gonna lie. But we're just kind of vibing with it. <laughs> it like makes your hair feel kind of rough. And then we're gonna go in with the dye.
Okay, <laughs> so I think that's probably the best we're gonna get. I might touch it up a little bit once I have the outfit on, depending on how I think it looks, but I'm just gonna go wash my hands and then I'm gonna show you guys the outfit and we're gonna put it on, so super excited. Just saying, but this product, the Edge stuff, came off my hands so much easier than the pink thing I used last time. But okay, so now we're gonna get into the outfit that I'm going to wear. I chose an outfit that Steph wore in an Instagram picture that Khadija posted during filming. I haven't seen it in any scenes or anything yet. So this is the picture of the outfit that I'm going to be recreating. So I have like a little green top. I have a black long sleeves sweatshirt. It's not the exact one, neither is the top. Um, I got one that I made sure had black strings. The one she has was sold out, so I couldn't get it. But this is just like a cropped black sweatshirt. I got the exact pants that she's wearing from Lily Biachi. I'll be posting all of the stuff down below that I got, by the way, just so you guys can see. But they're like these long red pants with like a checkered side. And then I got these cherry earrings that she wears. And then I just kind of got some rings, just random ones, because she was wearing a lot of rings. So I'm gonna go put this on, and then I'm gonna show you guys the end result of what I look like. Also forgot to show you guys, she does have white Doc Martin boots on, so I have those as well that I'm putting on right now. I have the whole outfit on. I'm gonna go and show you guys out in my living room where I have a full length mirror. But, oh my god, you guys, I'm so excited with how this turned out. I think it looks pretty spot on. I mean, obviously me and Khadija don't really have the same body type at all, but I think the outfit looks really good either way. So I'm gonna bring you out there and I'm gonna show you how it looks. Okay, so as you can see, I have the hair. The, uh, the cherry earrings, uh, the makeup, I think looks pretty good. And then coming out, we have the green, just like tank top, and then the black sweatshirt over top. And then we have the red pants with the checkers and the white shoes. So I think overall, this outfit came out so good. I mean, obviously, like I said, she's like kind of a skinny legend and we're kind of like a curvy legend. So looks a little different, but I'm still just like so happy with how it turned out. I think it looks like pretty spot on for Steph. So I'm so excited with this and I can't wait to go take a bunch of pictures so that I can post them online and share them with you guys. But yeah, this was my turning myself into Steph look. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed watching me turn myself into the ultimate snake, Miss Steph Jones. Um, make sure to subscribe to my channel if you're not already so that you don't miss my bonus ASMR video that is going to be accompanying this video, which will be up very, very soon. I hope you guys are excited for it. But other than that, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you loved it. Make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel down below if you've not already. And I will see you guys all very, very soon in a new video. Bye.